Hello and welcome back to Open School of Business. Please review, uh, rate and subscribe on our YouTube channel and also on all our podcasting platforms, Google, Spotify, Apple, or anywhere you get your podcast. Today, I'm very happy to introduce you to Shiv, uh, expert and a business owner around SEO optimization. And what is most important, his niche market is small business owners like yourselves or people who are looking to start a small business and grow it and be a startup owner, uh, but need help with marketing, especially in this day and age, it's all digital. And Shiv today is going to explain a lot of these techniques and tactics he uses in his company and more importantly, share his journey as a business owner of a digital marketing agency. Welcome, Shiv. How are you today? I'm doing great, Nath. Thanks for having me here. I'm pretty excited. Uh, thank you. Uh, would you like to start off with introducing um, yourself where are you based what is your company like today and who you serve as your target audience yeah sure so i am from india and uh, we help small and medium-sized businesses to get more traffic leads and sales online so we basically help them in generating uh, more visibility out there through marketing tactics like searching and optimization, pay-per-click, email automation, video marketing. And uh, most of our, like 90% of our clients are from United States and Canada. So we majorly serve the American and Canadian market. And other than that, we have some clients from United Kingdom, European and region and uh, the Aust Australia as well. So, yeah. That's yeah. pretty much about us. And it's not surprising because I think, uh, you know, everyone knows uh, this year we had millions and millions of people quitting their jobs. And a lot of these people are opening businesses. So America and Canada right now, they're just, um, you know, Northern America, USA. We're all in such boom of uh, new business owners. Um, and, you know, some of them succeed and they go... Um, and they stay strong for many years, uh, but for some of them is a big struggle in the beginning. So when you help your clients, especially if they're a completely new company, uh, how do you differentiate your work with them uh, as opposed to uh, a bigger company, let's say medium sized? Because when you're small, SEO is very hard to implement. There are not much backlinks, there are not many reviews, so when you're small, it's very easy to get lost in the Google search. So what is the main uh, recipe or a thing that you do and recommend to make sure that it actually works for small businesses? Yeah, so there is a huge difference um, in small companies and big companies, right? Big companies have proper marketers, proper copywriting uh, guys, right? Who uh, like uh, who send the message out there very easily, but small and the big budgets too. That's like, right. <laughs> yeah, you have to have yeah. to cover a cover coverage. Yeah, that's right. But with small businesses, uh, it's very difficult to understand in which direction they want to go. Right, uh, they have a financial struggle. Right, or even if they are uh, financially stable, they still need to understand a lot of things, and they have to take care of everything. They have to take care of operations they have to take care of marketing sales right so this is where we come in we help them in improving their marketing and help them in couple of areas of their sales as well so if you are a small business owner the first thing which you should uh, do is uh, hire a copywriter understand your ideal client because in a lot of times what i see is people are writing the message for the wrong targeted audience which makes it difficult uh, for the message to go out or which make it makes it difficult to target the correct audience so the first thing with whenever we do whenever we get any small uh, or medium-sized client is we sit there with them understand their ideal client so when i say ideal client we literally create their buyer persona we understand the age the 
demographics, their interests, their pain areas, where they spend their time, when, when they are free, which social websites do they visit, right? Based upon that. And what is the exact pain which they are solving? What is the exact thing which they are providing to their customers? So based upon that, we uh, work on writing the, the content of the home page and we work around all our blog topics based upon that. And once that is done, then we start the targeting. Then we do the keyword research based on the persona which they set. Because see, if you are targeting a marketing manager and uh, you are talking about the problems of business, right? Well, so uh, which is uh, which message uh, targets business owners, right? So there is a mismatch. Marketer will never come to your uh, website, or if they come, they won't be able to make the purchase. So if your targeted audience is business owners, you, your message should portray that and based upon that, you should have keyword research and all your marketing around that particular thing. That's how it overall plays out. So in this day and age, a lot of um, people also refer, but also they go on online platforms to rate and review and then helps a lot with new business generation. So um, a lead generation. It also very important to have your ratings seen so then your brand awareness and your brand is generally stronger. So what do you right. recommend how to work with your clients to make sure your ratings are high and reliable on some of these platforms like Google and Yelp and uh, there is another, you know, a second part of the uh, the question, I guess, is some of the platforms, they are paid now, like Yelp. And if you don't have that premium subscription, they might even limit the number of reviews you can have. So are there anything, any hacks that you would recommend to work around these things? Yeah, definitely. Reviews play a very vital role when it comes to your online marketing because uh, based upon studies, right, uh, more than 90% of the people make their buying decision after reading, tes reading testimonials and reviews. So yes, we highly focus on the reviews of our clients. We encourage them to get more reviews on Google. We encourage them to get more reviews on Yelp. Now, doing this is tricky because uh, they have very less time to ask for reviews right and in, in most of the cases they don't even want to do so so there are many uh, easy third party apps right where you just configure all your urls and the database of all your clients right their message their email ids and their phone numbers and what happens is these apps send messages to them or you can send them yourself you can manually initiate the message it sends a message to them asking their overall experience so now if the client gives less than four rating as soon as they give three or four star rating then uh, it takes them to the feedback form of the website where they could fill that what was the exact issue so that they could improve and if it gives five or four rating or 4.5 rating then it takes them to the platform where they want to get maximum reviews right? it can be here it can be google so it takes time to the google or facebook and they just write the review there so it's very easy and it makes it very easy for them to get reviews now as far as getting uh, your coming to your next question where you said that uh, number of reviews are limited in websites like yelp uh, for that uh, majorly uh, you can just slowly drip your reviews and you can focus on other channels as well like as i said google my business facebook so you can literally post unlimited reviews on these websites so just con call like keep your focus there and some of the reviews on websites like yelp and it would be more than enough plus there are websites like clutch or g2 uh, these are very good websites right these are very really legit websites and it not it is not easy to fake review there so we mm -hmm. highly encourage our clients to get reviews there as well and i feel that clutch is even better than yelp because it takes a lot of 
like they literally people need to give 10 minute or 15 minute interviews to get reviews on websites like clutch so whenever we provide any uh, services or we have a conversation with a client right we encourage them whenever they get a chance or whenever they have done something good to ask reviews uh, from their customers so once the cycle and the process starts it becomes very easy and it uh, they are able to take reviews on regular basis and ongoing basis so you just need to start that thing you just need to push the client for to get couple of reviews and once that starts it, it encourages them because they start seeing results themselves right if you're giving uh, <laughs> getting awesome. reviews on google then we send them google report that see this is the movement in the number of clicks and crawls from google my business right it's all because of you right we don't even take any credit at all we just tell them that it's all because of you thanks a lot for taking reviews or uh, they start getting leads from websites like clutch or maybe from yelp then they themselves see the benefit and since they are interested in growing their business they start getting more and more reviews overall yes third party apps can be used otherwise you can make a form on your website it, it's very easy to custom code there are plugins out there in wordpress which can help you with this if you are looking for a free resource another thing is you always knew like you always know which customers are happy and which are not so you can create a small bitly url and send them uh, that url to give you the review right uh, in one couple of stores what we have done is uh, we encourage that uh, what is third party um uh, website so, that you talked about that yeah, sends the yeah if you would uh, check on google you will find a lot of websites i don't endorse any specific website but realtimereviews.org and there are a couple of uh, small small websites out there which can be used for the same okay uh, awesome yeah. because i think it, it's very interesting that um there is a gap sometimes between uh, small business owners, especially depending on their industry and the way the tech is going so fast. That's right. I think it's very much easier for new generations to get into business and know how to market. But a lot of times they lack, you know, ideas or maybe uh, even uh, finances to start a business. But you know, they I I've seen I've interviewed another um, uh, entrepreneur who has a digital marketing agency, um, and he's very young. He's still a student in college, mm -hmm. so I'm thinking like, yeah, this is a great niche to help the small businesses because most of the small businesses are actually people of you know millennials and older, and even millennials are not that fast paced in terms of tech these days like social media TikTok, and all these platforms that were just like oh you know i'm just gonna go back to my instagram type because <laughs> <laughs> it's so overwhelming yeah that's so right. when you started your business i'm sure you were also young and uh very up to date with the tech uh, but um how was that journey for you like I think what resonated to me was when you were talking about the reviews as a business, uh, as a professional working uh, corporate career, I remember that I always knew that it's good to ask for a LinkedIn um, review, um, not review, recommendations from your colleagues and, and endorsements, which is great because that was your personal brand. And right. similarly, now you're working on your brand strategy for your company, and you have to do the same on Google, Yelp, and other platforms. Um, but when you transition from being a corporate um, or a freelancer who works mostly uh, as a personal brand, and people know you for what you can do, and then you transition from that being known as an expert in your field to being able to open a business where you hire other people and and they also work in the same industry as you are. So um, I wonder how that journey was for you when you uh, decided to take a leap and open an agency. I'm sure you already had a lot of good reviews from your colleagues about your SEO work. Um, just share how you actually started from complete zero to having an international 
clients, uh, you know, over how many years you've been in this? Yeah, like I'm in this from the past 12 to 13 years. So initially when I started, I was more into the coding part. I used to enjoy the coding and gradually when I learned more things and I started reading about marketing, uh, then it uh, like encouraged me to dig deep into the marketing world, right? So there, while working on coding and developing websites, I always knew how to develop them for my schooling dates itself. I started doing some research-based projects, right? How things work, how marketing work, how Facebook works, all those sort of areas. And when I kept on doing my research-based projects, people started to know about my colleagues, my friends, my classmates, all those type of people and I started getting some referral based projects, right? They, they used to send me the projects, hey, Shiv, can you help us with this or that? And that's from where my journey started. So for the initial three years, I worked on research based projects. And uh, during that time, I started getting a couple of uh, uh, reference based projects as well. So people started giving me the projects and uh, they enjoyed working with me. And then I thought about trying the waters of international market. There I got few projects from uh, United States and Can Canadian people. So one of my first client was Rob Nugaria. I worked with him for a couple of years and he encouraged me to open up my own agency. So initially he used to outsource me some of the work and I used to help him with the, all the technical things related to marketing and in SEO, the best part with me was I knew the coding part as well. So I never needed someone else to help me with those areas. So I used to be very quick and he was very happy. So we uh, uh, like in, in like together, we uh, made a very good team and we delivered a lot of great results, right? We brought in a lot of happy clients. So that's when it all began. And when I started my agency uh, i started getting projects from other areas as well that's when i incorporated this organization and uh, incrementers.com started and uh, then gradually i started getting leads from my website as well because i was sending the word out for it as well we i was doing the seo of my own website so that helped me a lot and then there are good platforms as well like upward right it used to call oldest that time then there was elans during those days so i took some project from those websites as well and overall it all started taking shape uh, uh, initially you would say my focus was never towards the sale i like you should think uh, and even i think this the same thing right now that sales is all about a good conversation if you just go on a good conversation and at the end it's just a yes or no but you should have a good time uh, when you are having a conversation and it's all about providing value, adding value to the person's life, right? Whatever they are uh, looking for or wherever they need your help, just, just keep on providing value and things will take shape. So that's when it all began and now we are a team of 115 people. So yeah, uh, that's uh, about me uh, and our organization. So it, it has been a... It, it has been an amazing journey so far. Yeah. And I think uh, you, you were telling me that it's great that, um, you know, you've been encouraged by someone that you worked for and they saw that potential in you and, and they recommended that you have to do this more often and, and, and actually have a form and, and framework. And it's great to have mentors in your life like that. That's right. And, uh, and coach like a business coach as well so it's mm -hmm. very good uh, and and the clients the retention right like right now how many of your how much of your revenue i should say uh coming from repeat clients so majority of our revenue i would say 85 percent of our revenue is coming from repeat clients because we mm -hmm. highly focus on customer services we have literally made a uh, lot of survey forms for our clients to understand what they need, right? Apart from their regular requirements, we need to understand how they think, what are their uh, uh, actual pain points, right? Where they are majorly struggling with, what exact problem they are solving for the world, right? So to understand those things, we have a lot of 
survey forms after that we have a lot of touch points so we make sure that our clients are happy and ultimately you need to mm-hmm. deliver results as well so all these things once they take shape like it becomes very easy to get recurring clients and right now uh, uh, we have a lot on our plate so that's why we are not heavily focused towards the marketing of ourselves we are gradually doing that but we are doing that in a, in a longer route you can say like so it won't need too many results right now and we don't even need too many clients as of now but yeah we are working towards it and gradually once uh, like our rest of the processes are even better right once like we reach to a target of above 90 percent recurring clients then will heavily go into the sales and marketing side Right, yeah. And also, it's about scaling. You need to scale at the same rate as you're gaining customers, which yeah. means like hiring, so, training your new employees, uh, having processes and uh, everything in place so people know, uh, you know, what to do, uh, and especially new folks. So we are into setting up that process as well. That process is set, but every time you cross a milestone, you face newer challenges. So we are uh, uh, helping our team and everything to get even better because one thing which I have realized so far is just take care of the client's happiness and rest everything will follow. So we want to make sure that all our clients are very happy and satisfied from our work and then rest of the things it, it become it's very easy even to get referral clients if your client is happy from you. So that's what our main focus is. Our main focus as to get more and more referral clients though we have a proper marketing and sales team as well but uh, we are trying that our referral clients beat the marketing and sales team as well so that would be super awesome <laughs> yeah see. i see that's awesome and uh, if you uh, you know you've been ta- w- working in marketing for a long time what are your favorite uh, books uh, in marketing or any concept that you learn to uh, that have made a major impact on the way you work uh, and on the way you advise your clients to work so some of my favorite books in the marketing niche are dot com secrets that very well tells you about the funnels and everything how it should be set and another uh, book which I like is sell like crazy it's uh, by Sabri Subi. So that is again a very good book which tells users how to set their funnels, how to create offers right on your offer page, how to upsell them. So it's a very book, a good book. Plus there are a couple of uh, coaches and couple of people which I follow. So that's overall things which I follow and based upon that we set all our clients and uh, do our magic. <laughs> awesome. I love I love that brand um, strategies and when you said magic, I just it just popped into my head that there uh, there's 12 archetypes, the personal branding and, and the brand strategy for a company and the company could be a magician. So uh, from the way you're talking about it, I think your brand personality is a magician's. <laughs> because uh, incrementers, magicians, in a way that you turn uh, a small business into medium and hopefully the medium business into, into even bigger businesses. Yeah, so, we, have of, uh, we have a lot of case studies where we turn small businesses into medium and medium to large. And uh, it, it has been an amazing journey with uh, all those clients. Yeah. And uh, it's great to share those stories. That's why I'm very happy that you had time today to come on show and share uh, your story and tell us uh, uh, how to set up a CEOs and, and marketing, digital marketing, targeting. Uh, so if there's anything else you would like to add, please welcome. Otherwise, we uh, wish you a very productive week ahead of you. And thank you for coming to the show. Uh, thanks a lot, Nari. It was uh, an amazing experience to be here. And overall, there are few things which I would like to tell your audience. 
whenever okay. you want to do any type of marketing or whenever you go on any discussion with your team or even if you go on your sales call you need to make sure that you explicitly talk about your usp with your clients on your website with your team right what is like what makes you different if you wouldn't have a usp then you wouldn't even be into the market so now let me clarify the usp for the folks it, <laughs> unique yeah. selling proposition <laughs> yeah that's right it's unique selling proposition and for this there is another very good book which is good to great so it's one of my uh, favorite i books. love that so, too yeah, and, and another one is built to last so these two are very good books anyone out there uh, hearing to this podcast should definitely go ahead buy it book buy this book right now so that you could read it later on like good to get is very good and you need to make sure that you have a proper unique selling proposition and you are talking about that with your team with your clients on your websites everything and everywhere so this is something which sets you apart and all the businesses have a usp you just need to find which one is yours otherwise you wouldn't even be into the market right people hire you there is definitely something which they see before hiring you so you just need to figure that out right that's spot on thank you so much for that Thank I you. love that. I think, mm-hmm. you know, everyone has something unique to offer. That's and right. if only they figure it out, it will blossom and you will ha- you will find your place on earth and, and your money will come to you. That's so, right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a productive week ahead. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.